<laughs> we announce the marriage of our daughter to, to the our son, son of. <laughs> you know. So out of uh, our 14 because... children, two of them are married. <laughs> two of them are married. <laughs> past that like you didn't say what you just said hi friends welcome back to the avocado toast budget if you're new here my name is Lexa and chances are you have probably either already seen or heard about this documentary because it is taking the internet by storm Lula Rich is a documentary on Amazon Prime and it is all about Lula Roe who has produced horrific leggings since 2012 and as terrible as those leggings are, it's the business model that is truly awful. In case you don't know what an MLM is, I do want to break that down for you. Although I definitely recommend if you haven't watched it already and you don't know a lot about MLMs, watching my The Truth About MLMs video, it breaks down exactly what they are and why they are so harmful, but we'll get into a lot of that in our analysis of Lula Rich as well. MLM stands for multi-level marketing. Multi-level marketing is also referred to as direct sales, network marketing, sometimes they even refer to themselves as like affiliate marketing, which is not the same thing. And it's a business model where the independent contractors of this company recruit other people to also recruit others and sell the products. But the key to an MLM is that the majority of the money to be made is made through recruitment or producing a downline, meaning that you recruit others to sell these products, they recruit others to sell those products, and then it, uh, very quickly starts to take the shape of a pyramid. And since the majority of the money is made by recruitment and not necessarily by just selling the products, it leads to these distributors focusing on selling the lifestyle of being one of the distributors for the MLM rather than focusing on the quality of the products. Namely, because most MLM's products actually suck and they're really only there so that they can get away with the structure that they have. You make a commission off of every sale that you make, but you also make a commission off of all the new recruits that you make and the money that they they are spending by investing in these products so that they can therefore then go and sell and recruit more people. But the reality of it is that really the big bonuses come from building your way to the top of the pyramid. Mentors and the coaches, their bonus checks. I've seen screenshots up to six figure numbers. In the Lula Rich documentary, one of the former distributors was talking about how in her year and a half with the company, she basically made no money off of actually selling the leggings. She spent about $78,000 on the actual product themselves, and she only made about $83,000. And then when you factor in like the cost of just running that business, she basically came out even. However, in that same year and a half, she made about $65,000 in bonuses from recruiting. And this is because you often have to buy into the company in some way in order to start selling for them. Whether that is actually having to hold inventory and then sell from that inventory, like we see happen in the Lula Rich documentary, people had all of these leggings that they then had to go and sell, or Typically nowadays, a lot of MLMs have moved away from that and they brag about the fact that you don't have to hold inventory, but you often do have to buy some sort of a startup kit. And then of course, in order to sell the products, you need to try the products and you don't get those products for free. You do have to go in and purchase them yourself. Oftentimes people in the anti MLM community point out how close this is to a pyramid scheme. Although I have found when you start bringing that up, most MLMers just shut down. They start telling you why it's not a pyramid scheme because of all the differences, which really are minute and don't make a difference. This is all a moot point. So nowadays I don't tend to focus on that and instead I just like to look at MLMs as a structure by themselves and whether they're a pyramid scheme or not, they're unethical, harmful, and create a cult-like environment. And we see that oh, so much in this Lula Rich documentary. The documentary starts off by following Mark and Deanne who are the co-founders of LuLaRoe and how they started the company alongside stay-at-home moms who were often looking for a way to make some money from home. Now, I'm not gonna go super in depth on exactly what happens. I think it's definitely worth watching. It's so fascinating. But if you haven't seen it, don't worry. This will still all make sense. It becomes very clear that both of them are highly intelligent and manipulative. They knew exactly what they were doing when they started to create LuLaRoe and started to make it around the structure of an MLM. But this documentary starts to unfold and peel back the curtains on a lot of the unethical parts of MLMs that I do wanna talk about. LuLaRoe is known for it's insanely high startup cost. The smallest package that they offer is like more than $5,000. And while Deanne brings up within the docuseries that they never claimed that people should go into debt for it, a lot of the distributors show that that is false and that they were encouraged to do whatever was possible in order to come up with that startup money. Women selling breast milk just so they could afford startup cost 
because they were promised that that $5,000 was going to absolutely change their lives. Now, while the startup fee is much higher than we see in a lot of MLMs today, that whole idea of doing whatever you need to do to come up with the money, putting it on a credit card if you have to, is still very prevalent. And if you follow anyone in the anti-MLM community here on YouTube, you've seen tons of distributors still in 2021 telling people to just put that money on a card because they'll be able to pay it off in no time. Oftentimes, they also will promote this idea of full-time pay for part-time work. That was definitely something that caught my eye. Part-time work for full-time pay, things like that. Even though statistics have shown time and time again that most people, meaning 99% or more, of distributors in MLMs either make no money or lose money. And while it is sold that a huge benefit of working for an MLM is that you can work whenever you want, however much you want, oftentimes whenever you do finally sign up for the MLM, you are pressured to constantly be messaging people, reaching out, doing something on your phone to promote your business. In the Lula Rich documentary, they talked about how even on these free cruises and trips that they were taking on, they were still working and encouraged to network and try to set people up to continue to grow their business. There is like never a second that you're supposed to be taking off. This documentary also exposes a really interesting side of MLMs, which are the subpar products. A lot of distributors and people who are pro MLM will say that they are not pyramid schemes because they have products to sell. But as we see in the Lula Rich documentary with the moldy, disgusting, holy leggings, and we've also seen in other MLMs, such as Monet with their shampoo that is making people's hair fall out, the quality of the products just isn't there because that's not what is important to the company and it's not what's making them money. So what happens with this pyramid-like structure is that oftentimes the top 1% or even more commonly way less than 1% are making shit tons of money off of the backs of everyone else below them on the pyramid. And when I say shit tons of money, I mean like 10 to $20,000 a day. And this is money they're making directly off of the people they're recruiting because the people they're recruiting are their biggest customers buying into the business and buying more products so they can continue to talk about it. You were originally a retailer. Then when someone signed up underneath you, you were called a sponsor and you got commission off of how many clothes they bought that month. But that's inventory bought by retailers from LuLaRoe, not sold to customers. I thought it was so interesting. One of the experts at the beginning talks about how in this pyramid-like structure, you can really only go down like 17 levels before you've maxed out like the entirety of everyone in the world. And on top of this unethical structure and business model, many MLMs, and we definitely see this with LuLaRoe, include a unique twist religion. Mark and Deanne are Mormon and that very much seeped in to the cult-like structure of this MLM. Mark starts spouting off like passages from the Book of Mormon. And I'm looking around going, I don't think everybody here is Mormon. Like, I don't understand why we're talking about this. Like, what does this have anything to do with selling pants? Honestly, I could do a whole video just on how problematic that integration of religion is to this business model. But obviously when you take the extreme sides of religion and the way that they start to can manifest like cults, and then we take MLMs and how they manifest like cults and put them together, it becomes a huge issue. But it also very much helped Mark and Diane to sell this white suburban stay at home mom dream. Often the faces of these MLMs are conventionally attractive, financially well off white women. All the consultants dressed alike, most of them were blonde, most of them were white, and all obsessed with the prince. They're held to this high regard because they are staying in their beautiful home, raising their beautiful children the way that God intended. And with the help of an MLM, they have the power to be able to still stay at home, do their godly duties, and also make some extra money. The underlying understanding is that that's a vision of white womanhood and it's a vision of a white family. What they are catering to and making aspirational is a racially coded vision. This is a white girl business. I'm gonna tell you right now, there is not a lot of diversity in this culture of LuLaRoe. And I definitely stick out like a sore thumb. And what happens is this causes a huge lack of diversity and basically just an echo chamber that contributes to this cult-like environment. I was invited, I did turn down the cruise, 
being on a boat with a whole bunch of white people like that, just not my thing. I'm so sorry. I just had to say it. I love white people to death. Just being on a boat in the middle of nowhere. And it wasn't only but a handful of us, if you know what I mean. I'll just pass. I'll see y'all when y'all get back. And I love this woman. She has had enough of this whitewashed bullshit. And I am here for it. And then underneath all of this is just this kind of burning question of who exactly in an MLM is responsible. We know that Mark and Deanne are the villains of this story, but where exactly do the people in the middle fall? Chelsea Fagan from The Financial Diet made a video about her thoughts on Lula Rich and MLMs, and I think one of the points that she brought up is important for us to talk about. She talks about how important it is to hold these ex-distributors accountable for their actions, and how in her eyes in this docuseries and oftentimes that we see online, the women who were at the very top, who were once exploiting other people, get out and then sometimes aren't held accountable for what they did inside of the MLM and how we need to see them not just as victims but as perpetrators as well. And I do agree with this, kind of. I agree with what she said that I do think MLMs are going to continue to thrive as long as we don't hold the people inside of them accountable. But I also think that it is a slippery slope when we try to take something that is as nuanced as an MLM that resembles a cult and try to put the people in it inside of one box of either a victim or another box of a perpetrator. Because it is true that many of these women in this docuseries that were exposing LuLaRoe for what it was were once very high up in the company. And that means, as we've talked about, that they were probably making shit tons of money off the backs of other people. Highest rank that I achieved was mentor. And how many people was, were in your team? Um. I honestly don't know, about 5,000. And it is important to acknowledge that and hold them accountable for their actions. But I also think that it's important to acknowledge the work that many of these women are doing to dismantle this MLM structure, reveal what is going on behind closed doors, and help the women inside of it to get out. Because a lot of these women who once were part of this structure are now some of the biggest advocates against it. And I think that that is important when we are trying to talk about how to hold them accountable. Because personally, I do think that there is a big difference between these women who were distributors who have now gotten out, are speaking out against it, and who are helping and advocating for women to be able to get out in a safe way, and Mark, Deanne, and their family who created the structure knowing exactly what they were doing and who take no accountability for their actions. Mark and Deanne know that they're exploiting people and they are going to do whatever they can to try to hide that cover it up and save face so they continue to make shit tons of money off of this. However, these women who have gotten out, many of them are fierce anti-MLM advocates. They're helping to advocate against the system and get thousands of women out of these MLMs. And I do think that there's something to be said about the fact that they were once unethically profiting off of this system, and now that same system they're actively working to dismantle. And side note, when it comes to Lula Rich, there's obviously varying levels of accountability that these distributors are taking on. And you can see that. Some of them are being very transparent about what happened and how much they made, while some of them are still trying to hide just how much fucking money they made off of the backs of the people below them. And I do think that that is an important conversation to have. But overall, I think this accountability piece is more important than trying to group people into a good or a bad box. Because I don't see structural change coming out of trying to paint these women and these distributors as perpetrators or villains of the story. I think personally change is going to come from a structural level, a law making level, one where we continue to expose the unethical practices that are happening inside of MLMs, and one that holds everyone accountable. So that is it for today's video. I really hope that you enjoyed. Definitely go check out Lula Rich if you have not because it is so fascinating. If you've already seen it or if you just have some thoughts, definitely leave me a comment down below so we can all talk about it. And if you learned something cool, please remember to give this video a big thumbs up. It really helps out the YouTube algorithm, helps boost this video to the top. That way more people can find this content. And I will see you all next time. Bye.